Oof. Oof. Sorry. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think just the way she, uh, I don't, that's really hard, like communicates. Like I think it's very easy to communicate with her and talk basketball with her. I think it's, it's she, she understands the game so, so well and wants every player to do their best on that court and work together as a whole and she's so straight up about everything. She's not gonna sugarcoat it, she's not gonna do anything, but she knows how to, how to talk to you and how to come across to players to where it's like, okay, you, you got, you know, like it's not, I don't know. So I think that's a big aspect of what makes her great. For you, Liz, uh, are there any notable changes related to scheme or style of play? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You want to just a little list? sprinkle? <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Can you repeat that? <laughs> Hold on. Are there any notable changes? Okay, so I think some notable changes is just how she spreads the floor mainly. Like, it's really, like I tell a lot of people that it's kind of like a five out, it feels like. Like, you literally rise and roll. Your four could go out. The five could go out. Like, really, everything is interchangeable. Now that we're spreading our defense to everybody switching around on the perimeter, like, it's kind of like a not a free-for-all, but a free-for-all. And I think that helps our team a lot because we do have an athletic team that can guard everywhere. And some people could play inside. Some people could play outside. So I feel like that changed our game a lot more and expanded it in a better way. A lot more freedom from the three. Exactly. <laughs> that I got to hit. <laughs> All right. That's, that's what I have. That was it? No, no, no. he's just going to ask you. That was, oh, that was just <laughs> that the was ESPN thing. <laughs> now it's real. Okay. Yeah, now it's real. <laughs> Sorry, not real, but I mean. Yes. Talk about just the, this is a big game, you know, ESPN and all that, um, playing a ranked team. You're kind of ready for that? Absolutely. Um, I feel like we've played many great teams, either now in the past. Like, I feel like we're built for this game, and, I just have faith in my team that we can come out here and, you know, execute on offense, execute on defense. We know who to guard. We're watching film. We're scouting, like, every single day. We've been scouting for a week now. So, I mean, if something does slip by us, it's like the next person in line should know what we're doing because we are scouting this team so much. How much did you go back and look at last year's, or have y'all gone back and looked at that much? I watch that game all the time. Like, I've been watching that game probably all year because I feel like that was one of, like, the craziest games, not that we played in, but like one of the most intense games. Like it went to overtime. Like that game was just so intense. So even this year, I've watched it like probably two, three times already. So I don't think I need to watch that again. What do you remember about that Michigan team, or just Michigan as a whole, and what they do well, and how they challenge people? You got it. I think overall, I think this game will be very different than last year's game. I can say myself just because. For us, they knew every single one of our, not to be too up on them, but they knew every single one of our plays last year. I mean, one of our past coaches was on their staff. So that's kind of tough going into a game, playing against that, them knowing. I mean, it's just like how when we played Maryland, you're, we, we scouted them very, very well to where they call the play like we knew it. You know, like, so it's tough playing. It's almost like you're kind of playing yourself in practice. Like me going up against Liz in our practice five on five, and I'm like, well, I know exactly what you're going to do. You know, that's tough to play against. I think we're a very different team as well this year. I think we have, um, like she said, with our new different offense, I think we have a lot of different attack points, like different different people that can score this year. Um, but I am I am excited to play against Nas again. I'm excited to play against Brown. We had played against them last year, so I think it's going to be a great matchup. In terms of you talking about the new offense, where do you think you've made your stride in terms of the adjustment as a, as a team, or was there a certain I feel like we're progressing every single game. Like, of course, when we started the season, we didn't know what everybody liked. We're a new team, you know. You don't know where to get some people to ball. You don't know, like, where they like to score at. So I feel like every single game, we just learning more and more about each other. Like, you know who likes to pick and roll. You know who likes to pick it pop. So, I mean, with this offensive scheme, you have time to, like, expand your game a lot more. So it gives you more space to score the ball. We had, we had a lot of games in a 
short stretch to start the season, and then the uh, basketball schedule has slowed down, but you've had the academic schedule heat up a little bit. What, what's this time of year like for y'all, and has it been good to maybe have a few less games and get finals and stuff like that out of the way? Truth be told, I love when we have a lot of games. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's very tiring, but like right now, the past week and a half has been very slow, you know, especially like when our lives are like revolve around basketball so much, you know, like we're like, we just want to get out there. We just want to play. Um, it, it is nice that things are slowing down a little bit that we don't like, you know, we're just finishing finals today and it's really nice to have that done with. Coach Nikki was even talking about today, just getting in the gym, shooting, just doing what you can't, you know, things like that. So I think that's the best part of this year, even though we don't have a ton of games, it's nice that it's just like basketball, like not right. several other things you got to balance with it. What about the environment, uh, Melissa, up there where you're playing in a WNBA arena, there's going to be the, the draft lottery and some things around that. Is that the environment that you kind of feel going up there before you play in it? Oh, of course. We know it's a big game. We know it's an ESPN game. We know that the, they announced the draft, like, rankings that night. So, I mean, we just got to make sure we're focused, you know, focus on the game, not focus on everything else that's happening outside of our game. I mean, we're going there to win. Just, I guess, can you talk about Nala's just kind of her game? And I, I don't know if y'all are head-to-head matchup, but that's, that's a pretty good matchup <laughs> regardless. I guess. Oh, yeah, I've played against Nas multiple times. We played in USA twice together. Uh, we played against each other last year. I mean, she brings a lot to the table. She's a tough player to guard. Like, uh, she could pound it in the post. I mean, I seen she was shooting it a little bit more outside, a little bit more this year. Uh, I mean, she's a strong body. So, I mean, we just know we, know we got to focus on defense because, I mean, if we stop her, that's a key part to their offense, and we should be just fine. Yeah, you know, I've been in there um, a few times, actually. I was actually telling the team, well, my staff, this funny story, I haven't told the team this. So the last time I played in there um, was on a road trip. We played at Chicago, um, and I fainted um, with about four minutes to go in the Chicago game. And so um, I, they put me on, then I got migraines real bad, so they put me on a medication. But I think the last time at Mohegan, I was either high or asleep, um, pretty much the whole the whole two days we were there at Mohegan Sun, like I still remember my GM waking me up to do the pregame speech. So, um, yeah, um, it, but it ha I have a lot of fond memories there from my time at Connecticut. Amazing fan base. Um, obviously, a lot of crossover fans with the Connecticut Sun and the the Yukon Huskies. So, um, a really educated women's basketball fan base. Um, you know, and I always said, like, I think UConn fans are so nice because over the years they just have pounded everybody um, up there in stores. So, you know, the fans got used to, like, being happy when a team came up there and made a few baskets or looked good. So they, they actually cheer um, kind of to see, I think, good basketball. But it's a great playing venue. It's a great size for women's basketball um, because it's a great concert venue. Back of house is really nice. I mean, so you, you truly kind of get, even though it's not a true pro arena, um, it's got a lot of the bells and whistles, at least back of house, which just isn't a lot of times a part of college. During this game, uh, Liz said she watched the game from last year like two or three times already. How much do you lean on some of the players' knowledge of this Michigan team, and how much do you have to kind of, you know, still do a full detox of, of what this team is? Yeah, honestly, like if I told you I don't take – anything from you know their experience last year I think I think what what is good for our players that played against them last year is they know how physical um, Nas Hillman is that's what they know um, they know she's going to rim run they know she's going to post hard they know she's going to go to the board offensive glass on every possession like that's what they know like you don't have to convince those guys that she competes on every possession so you know it's it's not you know you don't have to show her a hunt show the players 100 clips to say this this kid's going to work. You know, she's going to really, really work. Um, but we're a very different basketball team um, in terms of our entire perimeter being different. Um, you know, Dee Dee Moon and Dijanae pretty much played every minute of that game, including overtime. And so to have three different car guards um, in our starting lineup, guards that are going to, you know, that are different than Moon and Dee Dee and Dijanae, 
Um, you know, I think, you know, our ball screen defense is totally different than their ball screen defense was a year ago. Um, you know, Queen fronted uh, a lot of the game. So, you know, you take some things from, all right, what did they do um, when Queen fronted? What are they, what are they going to look for? I mean, certainly they run some similar actions that they did from a year ago, but we're scouting them based on what did they do against Minnesota the other day? What did they do against Wisconsin on Thursday? What did they do against Mississippi State? Because Mississippi State has somewhat more comparable guards um, to us in terms of small but super athletic and straight line drivers can get to the rim. And so, you know, that's what I lean on um, in this is, is our preparation as a staff, our scouting, our teaching. Um, and we've certainly had a lot of time. And I think that's the biggest fear as a coach in this situation is just the layoff between games. Are you kind of – are you game ready – um, you know, so trying to get some up and down in, but just still understanding we're a, we're a short roster. We're trying to bring some people back and, and being conscious of that. So kind of quality over quantity at this point. Um, so, you know, that, that's what I'm always going to rely on. I'm going to rely on the preparation that I do, the preparation that our staff does um, going into a game. You know, ironically, like, I think since Nas has been there, obviously they've played through the paint. I mean, you know, she's going to get a lot of touches. Um, I wouldn't say they play through her, but they play to her. You know, I mean, she's – now, I do think her, her, her passing has gotten better against double teams. I think she's a willing passer. Um, but as far as range, you know, she hasn't extended her range, so to speak, um, in, in the last year in terms of, like, numbers doesn't mean she hasn't taken a couple threes, but she hasn't made them. Um, you know, but I, honestly, they've 100% um, changed their ball screen coverage. And you can say they've done that for a lot of reasons. Maybe they wanted to be more aggressive against ball screens, but they're hard hedging every ball screen, and it's something we haven't seen all season. It's something that we do. Um, we don't do it on every possession. Um, but it's something that we do. It's something that we work on, so we're very familiar with it. Um, but we haven't we haven't been um, exposed to that, you know, consistently against anybody. And so um, both Kaiser and Hillman are really going to jump out against our screens, and and Sarah and J. Lou are really going to have to do a good job taking care of the basketball, trying to expose expose them, you know, 25 feet from the basket. And you know, we're going to have to be good in our actions. Um, getting list to the rim, getting queen to the rim, putting pressure on the rim on every possession. So, um, you know, I, I think that's different. I mean, I think it's just personnel driven a lot of times. I mean, I think they're always going to execute. I think Kim Barnes or Rico teams are going to play hard. They're going to scout well. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be competitive. But I think, you know, this is maybe from a perimeter perspective, not their most athletic team they've had, but they're high skill level kids. They're, they're kids that can shoot. And certainly they've been playing without their point guard since like 10 seconds into the first game of the season. And, you know, when you've got an experienced point guard that's really a big point guard too, um, you know, they've been a little bit point guard by committee all year. So, you know, we're going to have to be good on Leah Brown. We're going to have to be good on Hillman. And, you know, we just can't let people get away from us. Yeah, everybody's good. I mean, we're, we're, we're at full roster at this point. I mean, we're still trying to load manage to some degree. Um, in terms of a return to play. But I just, look, here's the thing about me. Like, even with Jaden, like, I, I just think it's very hard to be effective if you don't have the reps. You know, I, I know that maybe LeBron James can sit out an entire week of practice and then come play in a game and, and be LeBron James. But, but I think at this level, at this age, um, it's very hard until you get consistent reps. Like, I think Jaden's a rep kid. She needs to know what we're doing, why we're doing it, and she needs lots of reps to be able to do it. Um, so this isn't an easy thing. Like it's not, it wouldn't be an easy thing for any college kid, um, in and out of a boot and things like that. But, you know, we're getting her back healthy. Queen's fine. Um, she's, you know, she's 100%. So we're not concerned about that at this point. Um, but, but we just have, we have to be careful with Jaden because we don't want this to be something that, you know, she's dealing with all season long. We would love her to be 100% healthy and get 100% of Jaden rather than 70% of her all season long. 
I mean, she rolled her ankle. She had a little swelling, um, but I think it's one of those things that, you know, she probably is a kid. It probably is a situation where if we didn't have this break, you know, she probably could have done an around the clock icing compression kind of situation and played in a game a day or two days later. Like, I think she was capable. You just don't, you know, you just don't when you have the time um, to rest someone and give them a little time off and, and fully heal. But she's not limping. She's not, you know, like there's no favoring it. Um, I'm sure it hurt, you know. She landed on somebody's foot and rolled it, but um, she, she's fine. The beauty of all that is it's not really there. You know, it's kind of a studio-driven thing. Like, I obviously think Liz is excited, you know, um, so she can start promoting what team that she plans on going to because um, I think that that's the biggest thing, um, who ends up with it. Um, having, having sat in that room, it's quite anticlimactic, I can tell you. Like, having been through the draft lottery two years in a row, which I'm not proud of, don't get me wrong, um, but it's a bit anticlimactic because it's just four people. It's a quick thing. What I love that the W's doing and that they can need to continue to do is get the space to talk about the game and, and talk about the draft picks. And, and so to have the 30 minutes, that's a way bigger deal than the lottery itself. The lottery itself, I mean, literally is already predetermined and they just tell you. And you're, you're, you're prepared to answer a question if, if the balls hit the way you want them to. But... Um, you have no control, and then it's over. In fact, last year we were doing it um, Zoom, obviously, in the, the world we were in, and and we all lost power during the game. Like, it was the DePaul-UConn uh, game, and, and the, the whole system went down, and so they had to come back to us. So it was even worse, you know. But it's I think what, what it's about promoting women's basketball, period. So the idea that they're using that whole time in between games is awesome. It's awesome for college. It's awesome for the pros. Um, it's awesome for women's sports that they're going to do a full kind of draft lottery, you know, in conversation about the game. So that's something they've never done. It's been, you know, at a halftime, it's during a halftime and it's three minutes in studio and it's over and they ask two questions and it's on to the next. So this is a big deal. Like this is really cool, I think. So. No, I have to tell you, though, the bear pit was fun, and I'll surf swag all day, but I have to tell you, like, directing the band and, like, dancing, that was the longest media timeout of my career. Like, I am a good sport, but, like, I know I'm not a good dancer, and when Amber, like, uh, from marketing first said, like, hey, feel free to dance up there, I'm like, what happened to just, like, conducting, you know? And then I realized when I got up there, oh, I'm going to be here a while. So, you know, but my material was gone after about a minute. And so I just, you know, but they had a good time with it. You know, obviously it was great publicity for our program and, um, you know, got a lot of FaceTime on ESPN, got a lot of notes from friends that, that they saw me. Um, but I think it's about promoting these players. It's about promoting these teams. It's about getting students to our games. Um, because you see just how involved they are and how they change, um, you know, kind of the dynamics of a game and a crowd and, and everybody follows them. And so, you know, I just think it's important. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm realistic enough to know that it may never look exactly like that. Um, but but I, I want to grow it. I want to grow it consistently. I hope eventually, whether they think it's cool or not, maybe the chance of winning a $100 gift card or whatever um, gives them some motivation to come. So... Um, come and stay because the reality is, you know, that these 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 girls deserve it. They deserve, you know, to be cheered on by their um, fellow students, and and you know, they they're winners. Quite frankly, like I think that's what it's about. It's about creating an environment that's fun that that they see winning basketball, and and so something we can all be proud of. Oh my gosh! You know, I said like. If you if you like offense, that game probably wasn't wasn't for you. But if you appreciate like preparation and just guys really sitting down and 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 guarding their individual matchups and um, you know it, it's amazing how little rotation was forced because they guarded their own guy. Um, but I'll tell you, I mean, it was two good defensive teams. It wasn't. Um, as much as you know, there is no question that you know. I said that even when I got the job, that having 
watch them in the NCAA tournament last year, it might have been the best collegiate defensive team I've ever watched. Like, and it wasn't, it wasn't always the first layer, but it was a second layer of defense. It was the third layer. It's the way they flew around. We, we call that scram, you know, like when you start in rotation and you got to keep rotating and it's easy to get the first rotation and sometimes a second, but do you keep, do you keep flying around, you know, after that? And man, they, they just, they've built a platform where that's who they are. And so, um, yeah, I mean, Villanova had had no answers to the point where I felt like they were shooting air balls when they did get open shots. I mean, that's what I said to the guy next to me in the bear pit. Like, how are you choosing who to yell air ball at? Because at this point, they've I think they've all shot an air ball, so you can just keep chanting it like the entire possession at this point. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they're good. And, I mean, even Villanova, I mean, they switched everything, too. The, the, the difference between us and them was they switched and brought size because they had some little guys they didn't want to defend, so they were trying to bump off and switch and get size to the rim. And we just switched and battled um, for the most part. But because of that, you saw why offense was so hard to come by because we don't, we don't play a lot through our big guys, you know, and they had little matchups on them all night long. Um, but that's why James was so important in his ability to kind of break down the D and create some shots himself, create some shots for teammates. I mean, you think about some of the shots we made, like it wasn't like we were out there spotting up and taking easy shots. I mean, think about the first shot of the game when Matthew hit the three on like, you know, a dribble move and pull up. Like those are contested shots. So I think both teams had to really, really work for good shots. And it came down to like we, we had guys make more plays than they did for sure.